today I just want to ask you that recent uh, today, yesterday only they came the new uh, core valve and how do you think it's going to change our practice? Well, I I would say that the results which came out yesterday of the high risk uh, core valve trial randomized where core valve seems to be superior in terms of decreased mortality uh, is really groundbreaking. We always thought that we are equal because of the earlier studies, but equally important was the one of the bad stigma, I would say, or Achilles heel used to be the higher stroke rate in the tower cases. But which study showed that if you have a smaller catheter, like Corval 18 French, your stroke rate was lower compared to the surgery. So that to me is really, really important addition for opening up the door for oncoming newer uh, trials which will extend the co core valve or any other I would say the tower procedure to uh, lower lower risk patients intermediate and low risk so it is a really great exciting time exciting data so are you going to change your practice based on this and you are going to use it more and more core valve and less and less sap sapient valve as well? yeah that's a very good point the region is right now only one available fda approved is edward sapien which is 22 to 24 french since the corval got approved on january 17th or so we uh, we used to use about 70 percent corval and 30 percent edward sapien but last two and a half months kind of we have used maybe one not maybe only one case of Edward and all have been core because the sheath size and that's a very important because you have lower vascular complication, ease of procedure and now we know lower CVA. So therefore until we get a commercially available lower generation in the Sapien group which is Sapien XT ready to be approved any day which is 18 French, uh, the more and more core valve or exclusively I would say the core valve will be used. All right, so now I'm going back to the questions about the fellows. So now in current era, there are different, different branches of intervention like a structural, peripheral. So what's your saying in that? How should we, we choose our path in terms of intervention, whether we should, somebody should only do peripheral or go only for a structural or whether, or like, you know, keeping that in mind that coronary is just the basics? Well, actually, that's a very important. We uh, have this request and discussion almost uh, every other week uh, with the fellows and many people who apply. The key is that since the field of interventional cardiology has expanded beyond coronary, now endovascular, then structural heart disease, so it's not one year process now, two year. But the basic of learning, basic where you do is still coronary. So I advise everyone that do first year as a coronary, so master it. Once you are mastered in your coronary intervention, everything else will be breezed through. So therefore, then you decide whether you want to, on top of coronary, do you want to be structural or endovascular? Probably one or either should be okay. You don't need to be on all three of them. So the once after coronary, you get to, to one of other branch, whether you're structural heart disease, which includes the tower procedure, the now the mitral clip is approved by FDA, uh, and then valvoplasty, the septal ablation, ASDPF closures, or you want to go to endovascular. Endovascular area is really growing, but so also the structural heart disease. So clearly, I would say the basic best training which is the ground, uh, you know, putting basically the foundation of your interventional cardiology by the coronary on which you build your career in one or other. So what what, what you're looking forward for this ACC 2014? Well, I think there was a lot of uh, good uh, information and reports came out and particularly uh, very exciting. Two questions I think were answered. One of the core valve, and the second was the issue that what about simplicity, the renal denervation. And I think now, first time uh, since the, um, the study was halted because of no kind of no benefit was presented, and it, it's more and more data coming that maybe uh, renal denervation for a very selected group of patients, it's, um, but usually run of the mill, it's not going to work. All right, thank you so much, Dr. Sharma, for taking the time and talking to us.